Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning. We come to celebrate the third Sunday of Lent, and as usual, we begin by asking forgiveness, perhaps for any way in which we have offended someone in our family or an acquaintance, someone that we work with. He was sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to an everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our loneliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, Here I am. God said, Come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers. So I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, but when I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. If they ask me, what is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, This is what you shall tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus am I to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord.
St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we shall not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did, and suffered death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. He said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust its soil? The gardener said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Today's first reading, as you know, comes from the book of Exodus in the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible where we meet Moses. Moses was perhaps the most powerful hero in biblical history. He was the man who changed the course of history by himself. 
after him, after Moses, nothing was ever the same. Moses had an intimate relationship with God, and scripture tells us that he spoke to God face to face. God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, and they determined the rest of history. All of Western civilization has been shaped by those Ten Commandments. Moses led the people out of slavery in Egypt to the Promised Land. And he formed these various tribes into the Hebrew people, into the Jewish people. In today's reading, we meet Moses as he's just starting out as God's instrument. While a young man guarding sheep, something happens that will change his life. He sees a bush on fire, but the bush is not being consumed or destroyed. He approaches and God speaks to him from that burning bush, telling him, that he, Moses, must lead the Hebrew people out of slavery in Egypt to freedom. Understandably, Moses hesitates, and he asks, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and tell him to let the Jewish people go? He, Moses, then asks God, for his name, because he claims the people will ask that. And God answers, according to one translation, by saying, my name is, I am who I am. Philosophers, and theologians, great thinkers like St. Augustine, Thomas Aquinas, my classmate. <laughs> These great thinkers have studied and commented on that name, I am who I am. But in Hebrew, the translation of what God said, the words God used, aye, mean, I will be with you. God tells Moses his name, and that name is, I will be with you. That is what God is all about. That is what our God is all about. God is the one who is with us. God is with us when we have something to do and we really don't think we can do it. God is with us when we are joyful and happy and celebrating. God is with us when we are hurting or in pain or suffering for, what, for whatever reason. I am with you is God's name. That's God speaking to Moses. That's God speaking to each one of us. I am with you. No matter what is going on in your life, I am with you. 
I am always with you. That is who God is. Jesus, the Son of God, Redeemer, Savior, is literally God with us. He, Jesus, tells us in today's Gospel that God will never leave us. God will never give up on us. Like that fig tree in the parable that Jesus speaks, God will always, always, always give us, give anyone, a second chance. Something to think about. celebrate Eucharist today, we remember Thomas D. Pavo. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we ask you to hear us. We ask you to answer our prayers because we give them to you with hope. Because we give them to you always in the name of your Son, the visible Lord Jesus Christ, who lives now forever and ever. Amen.
and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now all dare to say, Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And, with you and we wish each other the peace of Christ.
and canapé dinner sponsored by the Catholic Family Life Group. Please note the change of venue that it is here at St. Patrick's, not at St. Thomas More. The dinner will be held next Saturday in our parish center, so we hope that you'll join us. Um, also, from Father David, because of the funeral of his good friend, Father Mike McEwen, which is on Tuesday, Father Costa will the second afternoon Bible study that he's hosting, the one that comes in the afternoon on Tuesday, will now be held on Wednesday afternoon. So if you've been attending that, if you please come on Wednesday for the afternoon session. Uh, same time, same place at Thomas More. Um, we will hold the evening session, though, on Tuesday evening. So if you've been part of that group, um, each group has about 40 people, almost 40 coming. So thank you so much. And I ask your prayers for Mike McEwen, who's a wonderful uh, pastor, wonderful priest. Uh, he's in the Diocese of Boston. And he's in the same group as uh, in the seminary as Father David. So lovely man. He's only 63. Um, he died of cancer. So if, if you please keep him, Mike, in your prayers, Father Mike, and also Father David. They've been very close. So thank you. And um, on April 1st um, is the first Friday of the month of April. We will hold adoration, as usual, here at St. Patrick's Church. We have designated Friday, April 1st, as our parish day of prayer for peace, praying especially for the people of Ukraine. We are looking for people to help lead the rosary and attend the praying of the rosary at 3 p.m. on that Friday at St. Patrick's at here. If you would like to do this, to lead the rosary or be part of it, if you would call Wendy at the parish office and she will set that all up. So we thank you for your, your prayers. Even if you're not here, maybe at 3 o'clock you could say a little prayer uh, and join in the people that will be here at Adoration. So that's on April 1st. And uh, just as a reminder, the St. Vincent de Paul Society has bags of food available uh, right outside the back, right at the back pew uh, in the hallway. Um, there's, if for anyone who's in need, we ask you to take that for yourself, or if you know someone that could use some groceries, they're available right there, just take them with you. And uh, it's a wonderful uh, gift that we can give to each other in need. So I thank you, and please avail yourself of that. Thank you. God bless you all. Let us pray. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Some nice memories this week coming to an end. The feast of St. Patrick, <coughs> Irish soda bread, <laughs> Jameson's, <laughs> and then the feast of San Giuseppe and uh, Zeppole. <laughs> and finally, but not the least, two big wins for Providence College <laughs> basketball. <laughs> the Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Yes. Our closing hymn is number 125. And the next we write number 125.